Are we are we live? You're listening to the dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. Now this is a American history podcast where each week I man with eyebrows man with toes feeler for? feeler of soft sheets. Dave Anthony reads a story from American history to his friend. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Real weird stuff, That was Dave. great. Yeah, I know how to do a part of... I thought it was really show. good. Yeah, my part was good. Well, Especially when I didn't brag about having toes. Well, the, what happens on this show is I do our regular intro, uh, I get heaps of judgment, and then, uh, and then I toss to you. And it's mm-hmm. pretty great. It's a pretty great way to start, just being judged. Hey, congrats on having toes and eyebrows. It's huge. Some people don't. That's huge. Oh, don't you dare try it. <laughs> well, that's pretty fucked of you. Because uh, I got a buddy with two club feet. Yeah. Well, then this, he probably doesn't appreciate call, you going around toe boasting. I don't know if they still call him that, but he can kick. Well, I, I mean, and what now what? You're being sensitive now? No, he's on the Argentinian soccer team. What's his name? Uh... Mm-hmm. Noto uh, Lopez. All right. What are we playing the intro? Are we doing dates? Where are we? Because this part's over. And called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. <laughs> Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> Come on, the flames. Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. I see done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. That was great. Mm, real our, good. That's our music. Yeah, it was good once you stopped talking. Uh, David, I will be um, at the Denver Improv uh, July 26th, 27th, 28th. I'll be at the Acme Comedy Club, Minneapolis, Minnesota, July 30th through August 3rd. I'll be at the Fremont Abbey in Seattle, Washington, August 17th, and then Comedy sta- uh, comedy on State, Madison, Wisconsin, August 22nd through the 24th. 24th, two shows recording the album. GarethReynolds.com for ticket info. The Doll Beyond Tour will be in Irvine and San Diego this August. We'll be in Madison. Oh, no, we'll be in Sacramento and Boise in September. We'll be in Madison and Milwaukee in October. Then we go to Europe. We're going to be in Stockholm, Oslo, Amsterdam, Glasgow, Manchester, London, Birmingham, Cardiff, Dublin, and Copenhagen. Uh, go to dollpodcast.com and get yourself some tickets. Boom. And if you want to watch two men podcast together, go to the All Things Comedy YouTube page. Yeah. And you can see how dynamic it's really, it really gets when yeah. two guys with microphones just talk. It's pretty... Watch the... It's like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It's like watching the group theater. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know them? Yep, this is great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> February 16th, 1857. Year, year of our, our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. Congress established the Columbia Institute for the Instruction of the Deaf and Dumb and Blind in Washington, D.C. Could go either way. It's not a, uh, it's not a kind uh Name? No. Nope. In 1864, the institution began dispensing college degrees. Interesting. So it becomes a college. Okay. Edward Galladay, a... Galladay. I got to look that up, actually, to make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Because if I'm not, uh, I'm going to catch so much fucking shit. Uh, Okay. Because I say it all the time in this. Now, you'll keep this in, Aaron? This will be on the YouTube page? So people listening won't hear this part. Uh, well, Galladay. Really terrible um, sipping sound. Celebrate. <laughs> Just focus on what you're doing. I'm trying to find Don't it. worry what I'm doing. It could be so nice. Aaron's head's nodding. Maybe his name's Galladay. Oh. Or maybe it's pronounced another way. What? Oh no, oh no. Dave's gonna stop? check on his phone. All right. 
Mm -hmm. Make sure the name he didn't bone. It could be so nice. Galladay. Cool, he's putting on the sneaker pimps. <laughs> Yeah, the death. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank God I checked that out. Okay. Galadet. From the top. Or wherever. Oh, we'll just start. We'll just start. I'll just right. uh, start it. We'll just start over again and I'll uh, I'll edit it. February uh, 16th, 1857. Year, year of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. That's correct. correct. And, um, and um, we love it. it. Congress established the Columbia Institution for the Instruction of the Deaf and Dumb and Blind in Washington, D.C. Okay. It's a hot, the, hot title. The birthplace of our Lord. Um, yeah. You know it. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. You know it. What? In 1864, the institution began dispensing college degrees. So they're, they're college. Dispensing. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, not just, I mean, you got to earn it. Right. It's like Trump you. Right. Right. Edward uh, Gallaudet. A hearing, uh, not deaf man. So I'm, I'll be using hearing. A people. hearing, not deaf man. Yeah. So this story. Oh, he's capable of hearing. He's capable. Of hearing. Okay. So I'll correct. be using a hearing man or a or a, or a deaf person. Okay. Guess. Gotcha. Um, his father Thomas had founded America's first deaf school. Uh, so uh, Edward was named president. So he's the first the first president. Uh, hearing man. Later that year, the school's blind students were transferred to a school for the blind in Baltimore. Okay. The college was renamed Gallaudet College in 1894 in honor of Thomas. In, eight, in 1910, Edward was replaced by a hearing man, another hearing man president, okay. who served until 1945. He was, ex he was then succeeded by another hearing president. That's quite a run of hearing men. Yeah. Everyone's hearing. A lot of hearing. A lot of hearing yeah. going on. In the 1960s, deaf faculty members spoke up about the disrespect from an administration that was still dominated by hearing people. Right. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So like everything else. Yep. Just like everything else. Yep. <laughs> like everything else. They shouldn't be in charge. I'm fucking out of here on this one. <laughs> Can't take it anymore. Hearing University President Edward Merrill took office in 1969. He addressed their concerns by forming the President's Council on Deafness. Good. So he's found a council. Yeah. A uh, group of deaf faculty who could bring their concerns of deaf people directly to Gallaudet's president. Okay. My guess is it'll, it'll fall on deaf ears. <laughs> <laughs> Merrill also appointed many deaf people to important campus positions. Okay. So he's sort of here. I mean, yeah. Okay. In October 1983, Merrill retired. Gallaudet was the country's only liberal arts college for the deaf, but it still had never had a deaf president. Weird. Right? And it yeah, was, real it was weird. kicked off in 1857. Sure. So quite a run of the hearing. You'd think at this point. Somebody would yeah. be deaf in charge. Gallaudet, uh, so uh, only a quarter of its trustees were deaf. Okay. <laughs> That's the correct I, response. Yeah, I mean, well, I just don't. I, I, you would just okay. Yeah, no, wouldn't you think? You would just assume that just that would be how it is. Yeah. Merrill told the board of trustees his replacement should be deaf. Great. And he's like, it is time for a deaf person right. to be president of this college. Sure, for deaf people. Uh, uh, Merrill. Uh, there was a, quote, small but powerful clique within the board composed primarily of members who viewed deafness from a clinical point of view or who had a strong corporate mentality or both. We'll call them the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> so by clinical point of view, that means uh, deaf people are broken. Fix them. Right. Okay, good. Right. As That's the right approach. As opposed to the, the just people. Uh, right. As opposed to nuance with each individual. The group spearheaded the uh, hiring of another hearing president. Good. So, great. It's yeah. all coming together. Yep. Uh, he only lasted three months, and then he resigned. Okay. Jane Spillman. A bold move would be to just be like, I'm going to become deaf. Oh, my God. That's how this you is how be. Much really, then you're the king. I care. Yes. Jane Spillman, the hearing chairwoman of the Board of Trustees, said in his statement there were things that bothered board members 
And it was a poor match, and that's why he resigned. Okay. An interim president was chosen. Hearing? Another hearing man. Well, okay. We, I mean, even interim would be great. You could just, like, yeah. then you could just be like, Would, oh, we have, like. Wouldn't that be easy to just do just an interim? Real quick. Yeah, you would think. Deaf shift, then be like, oh, back to oh, hearing. But we tried. No. It was really great. We'll do it again. Can't even give him that. Nope. Jerry Lee, he's the new president. After months, his appointment was made permanent. Okay. Students and faculty became resentful because of the lack of a formal search. One alum, quote, we felt Mrs. Well, you, they probably find it like the new Dalai Lama. It's That's just right. like a baby in the hills. And, and then you they follow yeah, the way, which, way the smoke out. billows. That's right. And then they're like, here's the new faculty That's exactly how they faculty do it, president. as long as he's not deaf. Right. Yes. Can he hear? Yes, he's hearing. Okay, no, great. Then it is for sure him. Yeah. If he was deaf, then it's the baby next door. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, quote, we felt Miss Spillman pulled a fast one to get her boy, Jerry Lee, selected without really going through the, same, through the process. Okay. A deaf staffer, quote, Spillman enjoyed doing things for deaf people, not with deaf, deaf people. You would never dream of inviting your dog to have dinner with you. That was her attitude. She patted deaf people on the head. Oh, good God. Horrible. Yeah. There you are, Deffy. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, wash my hand. I got some deaf on it. <laughs> That's totally how she is. On August 24th, 1987. 1987. Yeah. Are we going to get a black president before they get a deaf one? <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> president Lee announced he would resign at the end of the year. Uh, he had gotten a new job at Bassett Furniture. Sure, a, a natural transition. Yeah, it was a company owned by the Spillman family. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Boy, this is like mini government. Yeah, it really is. A Jane Spillman, quote, some people might think the chairman of the board is a Judas for having the president come to work for her firm. But this man is a businessman, and it was very obvious that he was going somewhere. Thank God Bassett was able to attract him. I love when people call out exactly what they did at the beginning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like some people would say that this is nepotism. This is not nepotism. It's like obviously nepotism. And you wouldn't she, have said that. And then she describes nepotism. Yeah. Two weeks later, on September seventh, the president's council uh, on deafness held a meeting. Seventy or so people came. It was the first time hiring a deaf president was seriously talked about in a public forum at the school. The idea rapidly gained gained steam among deaf staff and faculty. Sure. The trustees formed a search committee. For the new president. The trustees did. Yeah. Five of the 11 members on the uh, the committee uh, were deaf. <laughs> oh, Dave, that is so almost so barely a majority. <laughs> so knocking on the door of a non-minority. <laughs> uh, six of the members were trustees. Hmm. Only one was faculty. Uh, it was chaired by IBM executive Philip Braven, a deaf trustee. The committee issued a press release saying candidates should have, quote, a broad and deep knowledge of deafness. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you does could that take kind it, of make well, sense? Well, you could just take it one more step for a little. Go ahead. What more, would that? You could just be like, what? we're after a deaf one. Oh, no, 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 we're no. We're just no. looking for a deaf one. No, because no, the person needs to understand deafness. Right. Who better to empathize with the plight of uh, hearing impairment than one who is hearing impaired? I guess. Ooh. Uh, Two on the nose. Yeah, I a don't. on the nose. Uh, I don't see how that okay. could work. All right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, we tried. We did. It's this 1987. Good, yes. You know that? 1987. Right. That's right. It's been around for 100 years. Yep. Right. It's okay. all going well. Yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, the uh, committee press release also said, quote, sensitivity to the issues significant to individuals with disabilities may be an accepting alternative. So one more time, because that's a full of bullshit. So they said a, a deep and broad knowledge of deafness yeah. and sensitivity to the issues significant to individuals with disabilities may be an acceptable alternative. Sure. Okay. An alternative. Great. So they're saying so they're already sort of doesn't have to in the be pool a little bit. deaf. Right. Oh, and knowing American Sign Language was preferred. Preferred. Interesting. <laughs> so, so communication with these students was preferred. 
Could you imagine? We'd rather you be able to communicate with the students, but it's not a must. I it's mean, not a must. It's not a must. Could you imagine not knowing something? It's not a must. It's you just... know, the truth is sometimes if you just give them a pat on the head, <laughs> that's as good as just having a regular conversation. Jesus Christ. Uh, a willingness to learn sign language was all that was needed. <laughs> that seems cr- that seems crazier. Yeah. You learn on the job. That seems crazier. Yeah. Than even not knowing. I think you no, just it's... be like, this person just doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Rather than be like, he'll slowly figure it out. Ugh. In September, the National Association for the Deaf director wrote a column arguing for a deaf president. In October, in an open letter to Spillman, the PCD, which is what I said earlier, the uh, the group that, uh, you know, President's Whatever. Council on Deafness that, okay. that Merrill had created. Right, right. I remember that? <clears throat> yes, from earlier on this one. Yeah, the, uh, on this podcast. Right, yeah, yeah, from today's thing. Yeah, earlier. yeah, yeah, we just talked about in it. In this one, it was there. Yeah, we were... In this one. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about it on this episode. Anyway, the PCD. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I got to find it. No oh boy. Uh, the PCD asked for a new uh, president of the college to be deaf. So 67 people applied for the job. Okay. Only nine were deaf. Interesting. Not a great start. That's a really bad start. Especially with a board that seems pretty against uh, this. The search committee narrowed it down to 12 people. Okay. And let me guess, two deaf. They got a petition demanding a deaf president from 200 faculty members. Okay. On January 1st, 1988, Jerry Lee resigned. The trustees replaced him with a temporary management team of four administrators. Interesting. Two of whom were deaf. Okay. An English teacher and a graduate student and four others started getting together to discuss the need for a deaf president. The six men started calling themselves the Ducks. The... Because they hung out so much and uh, were tied together and all that shit. Okay. There's a lot of... It's not great. Animals that... If you're going to say the Ducks, it's because you got to put your head into water for a little while and come up. Or that you love bread. I don't think that would be a thing. There's other pack animals. Yeah, there's other pack animals, but yeah. I think they're thinking of like ducklings in a, in a row kind of deal. Okay. I could use a lot of punch-ups. Well, ducks are also rapists. Well, what kind of knowledge is that? What? If they're one of the animals. Does that come into play? Well, it might. Well, what a horrible... What, I'm supposed to just sit here the whole time wondering... Okay. I'm just giving you some nature truth. You're not helping this episode. Dolphins, too. I'm aware of dolphins. Lady jerked off a dolphin, ep three. In early February, the search was down to six candidates. Okay. Three hearing, three deaf. Boy, this is like a real American Idol situation. (laughs) (laughs) At this point, not many students were pushing for a deaf president. Not many. Okay. It was mostly the staff and faculty that were like really pushing it. Okay. So the Ducks planned a rally to change that on March 1st. They sent out a press release. But when media found out it would be peaceful, they were not interested. Right. Well, the media has been consistent for the last 30 years, at least. (laughs) Uh, Some still wrote about it, uh, like the Washington Post. Senator Bob Dole and Vice President George Bush and other politicians wrote in support of a deaf president. Well, I mean, if Bob Dole and George Bush are writing for this. Right. Yeah. How are you to the right of that? How do you fuck that up? Yeah. How are you like, no, they're too progressive. Uh. And the reason they were doing that is because the federal government pays about 75% of Gallaudet's budget. Okay. So the Ducks started holding uh, planning meetings with undergrads. Campus groups like the PCD interviewed six semifinalists. So the PCD is interviewing their own people at the same time. Okay. They learned none of the three Herring candidates that the committee had picked had any experience with deaf people at all. Interesting. So, so that's... That's a good sign, right? No, because why? Because it means that the three deaf people that they have are just total bullshit. Oh, and yeah. And the other three are the ones that one of those people is going to get put in. Yeah, that's exactly what it means. Yeah. <clears throat> so the uh, the PCD only recommended the deaf candidates. I mean, imagine the, the six. Committee. Imagine the six of those hanging out. Oh my God! Like three of them, like literally, have no way to. They'd be like, "Wait, you're going to be president?" And be like, "Sorry, what are you doing What's with your happening? hands?" I'm a little confused. What's happening? Oh right, they're deaf. I did read that in the pamphlet. Right. Anyway, I mean, money's great. It's like sending me in to run Madagascar. 
Well, Dave, you know, uh, we'd all love for you to go there. What the fuck just happened? What I'm are you doing? Tea a stir. Well, You're no. giving your tea a stir with a s- s- metal spoon and a metal cup? It could have it could have gone better. What about just picking it up and like swirling it around? What well, what are you what are you a sommelier? That's not how you do this. You can though. The problem is we're podcasting. Yeah, no, I know. Look, I I agree. I I was wrong there. That was the most English thing you've ever done. <laughs> uh, uh, right now, my mother's like, "Why does I have such a headache?" <laughs> Coffee. He's doing something somewhere with tea. <laughs> Uh, right. So, so obviously the, like I said, the PCD are like, well, if the three hearing candidates don't have any experience with deaf people, we recommend the deaf people. Right. To the search committee. No brainer. But the search committee doesn't give a shit. Right. So the faculty Senate then endorsed Elizabeth Zinzer. Let me guess. Hearing. Yes. Yes. How'd you know? I don't know. I can smell bullshit. She was a hearing vice chancellor at the University of North Carolina. Uh, at Greensboro. On February 28th, the search committee submitted their final three candidates to the board of trustees. King Jordan, who was the deaf dean of... King uh, Jordan? Yeah, that's just, I know. It's a weird name. but that's, that's a weird name to become president. Yeah. You're already a king. Yeah, he's already a king. He's taking a back step. Yeah. He's taking a back step. Yeah. You have total authority. Yeah. You're now, also, you have, now there's checks. Yeah. There's also a king of Jordan, so you're really close to You could probably just roll into that country and be like, hey, what's up? I'm King Jordan. King Jordan. And, I have a table for two. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you can run. Oh, right this way. Yeah. Um, so King Jordan was deaf. He was the deaf dean of Gallaudet's College of Arts and Sciences. Okay. Also, Harvey Corson was picked. He was a deaf trustee. Okay. And then Zinzer, the only hearing finalist. Here we go. On, on Tuesday, March 1st, uh, the Ducks' big protest happened. A thousand protesters gathered at Gallaudet's football stadium. There were students, faculty, staff, and members of the local deaf community. Deaf President Now buttons were distributed. So that's like the slogan they're going okay. with. Deaf President Now. Many speeches were given in support of a deaf president. The group then marched to the vacant residence of the university's president, and they chanted Deaf President Now in sign language and held up the deaf power sign, which is one hand raised in a fist and the other held open with the palm over an ear. Huh. So the rally's a huge success. It gets all the other students like, oh, what's going on? Right, okay. Because, you know, college students. Yes. Um, so now <laughs> students wanted to know why there had never been a deaf president. Okay. But did, now they're like, why the fuck has that never happened? Good. And so they start demanding one. The Alumni Association asked all members to urge a deaf president be hired. Boy, Dev, I think you're really setting us up to not get a deaf president. No, no, they're going to get a deaf president. This one ends happily. Students pitch tents on the lawn of the administration building. They tape posters to the walls, including one reading, Hey, Zinser, go back to where you belong. Gallaudet does not need you. Get lost. It's tough timing for that one, but still. <laughs> The next day, there was heavy rain, but protesters took over a street near the school until D.C. police made them leave. The next day, they took to the streets again. Uh, they didn't block traffic, but some hung, hung from traffic lights. You know, yeah. do what you got to do. Yep. The trustees interviewed candidates one <clears throat> final time. King Jordan said, quote, Now that the search committee has said two deaf candidates are qualified, you have an obligation to pick one. Yeah, I mean, it's two versus one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you don't now, you're being uh, overtly dickish. Wow. 100 protesters held a candlelight vigil outside. A trustee, quote, It was a small number, and the board's reaction was, so that's all the opposition there is? Some of us laughed a little. Oh, those (laughs) fucks. Uh, the protesters, the reason there was such a small group of protesters is because they just thought that it's two to one. To. They have to at right. this point. They had like literally you're like, well, they have to. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so the board met at the Mayflower Hotel on Sunday. A deaf trustee warned them if the new president was hearing, there would be, quote, vigorous, vocal and possibly even violent opposition. Yeah, but they're all like, none of them speak sign language. So they're like, what did he just say? <laughs> these croissants are delicious. Have you guys had these little mini things with jam in the middle? <laughs> this was the first time 
some of the hearing trustees learned how intense the students and faculty's feelings were. What the? Oh I mean, God. just the worst. It's just, just so regular. Yeah. So it's, normal. It's just. Oh wait, what? Why? What? What is the why? first I've heard? Of oh it? my God, that's not a big deal. On decision day. Faculty, staff, students, uh, local deaf community members, and media gathered at the school gym for the 8 p.m. announcement. Oh, boy. At 6 p.m., 10 of the 14 trustees voted to elect Elizabeth Zinzer Un president. Unbelievable. Why? What? Just because. I mean, why? Why is that unbelievable? She's a great <sighs> candidate. Yeah. All three deaf trustees voted for King Jordan. Yeah. I want President King. Yeah. But many hearing trustees thought Zinzer was, quote, an academic superstar. Good God. An academic superstar. Despite the protests, they thought they, they'd be derelict in their responsibilities if they didn't choose her. Unbelievable. Rumor, Could that be true? Is that true? What, that... Do they really... I mean, is it... Do they really think that? No. Right. I, no. Okay. All right. That's all I need to hear. Um, Spellman called and offered Zinzer the job, and she accepted. Great, good, god damn, close it up. It's a good story, right? Great story. Anyway, that's the end of the story. Awesome. All yeah. right. Um, do we gotta thank anyone, or how do you want to do? No, this? I think we're just happy all right, that it we all signed turned cars. out good. Yeah, yeah. Someone called the Gallaudet PR office, where there happened to be one of the ducks there, and he heard the news. Okay, he ran to the gym. To and told the crowd, but the board had already taken the awesome step of leaving out flyers that read, quote, first female president. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. Smooth. <laughs> Smooth devils. I mean. Well, the guys are out of the protest equation. <laughs> Ladies, carry the torch. We no longer may. <laughs> One student said she, quote, found the papers all over the ground. The board decided they wouldn't make the announcement in per person, but just left papers. It's like, uh, I don't want to get shit for talking. It's not even talking shit on Trump. A lot of people are depressed the day after Trump got elected. This one girl I know on Instagram was like, you guys, the first lady was an immigrant. Everyone was like, get off social media. <laughs> get off. We don't want this today. <laughs> So after the shock wore off, the crowd gathered outside on Florida Avenue and blocked all six lanes of traffic. Mm, more than 100 people. A few angry protesters, uh, protest leaders spoke. Someone asked if anyone knew where the trustees were meeting. Good question. First question. It was supposed to be a secret, but Mayflower. somebody knew. The Mayflower. So soon there was a mad dash for the Mayflower Time Hotel. Time for Plymouth Rock to land on them. That's right. Yeah. Which was miles away. Right. And they actually started running in the wrong direction, and a Washington Post reporter had to tell them to turn around. Okay, sure. <laughs> Just that, like, spinal tap we scene. Gotta, Rock and roll! <laughs> we got to have a little bit of comedy. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you are probably so fired up. Oh, yeah. That you're just like, let's go. Mayflower! Okay, now, now we got to think. Now we got to think. It's east. It's east. It's east. It's east. It's west, east. It's east. East. West, 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 west. Run in every direction! Let's go! When the crowd arrived at the hotel, the trustees were eating dinner. Oh, yes, Enjoying Dave, their great work. Dave, my dream. Yeah. Uh. The protesters tried to enter, but cops threatened to arrest them. Uh, the trustees eventually invited uh, one of the ducks. One of you may come in. Student potty president Hibok and another student inside for a meeting. Okay. Spillman said the decision was non-negotiable. Oh. You're just the worst. Yeah, she's the worst. Quote, Zinzer has a good attitude. Just give her time. Your feelings will go away in a few days. I understand. That is, that, sorry, that is fucking ludicrous. Oh, wait, it's going to get worse. I can't. I understand that you are emotional, but it will be all right and things will get back to normal. Hey, let's drink wine from her skull. How about that, everybody? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun, too? That's when, crazy. When you have had an injustice to you and someone says, I understand you're emotional, it's literally the worst thing. Yeah. You're still patting people on the head. Yeah, she's totally 100% patting people on the head. Your emotions will... Oh, my God. Yeah. I would just... Oh. Mm -hmm. 
More media were called to the hotel, and this time they were told the protest would not be peaceful. Good. So there's an angry crowd outside. Finally, Spillman goes out to talk to them. <clears throat> Reading the room, she praised Zinzer's qualifications. Smart. <laughs> Good read. Good read. Did she play poker? <laughs> And implored them to give her a chance. Your emotions will go away. <laughs> You're just angry for no reason. The protesters uh, asked questions. Uh, she answered the less difficult ones. Sure. Uh, often with self-incriminating non-answers. It did not help that she said at one point, quote, deaf people are not ready to function in a hearing world. Oh, what? What? She's saying... That's her way of saying a deaf president wouldn't be ready because it can't communicate with anyone hearing. Yeah. A deaf president can't run the school. That's crazy. It's fucking insane. It's like, so it's like, so 1800s thinking yeah, yeah. about, you know, other people that aren't yeah. white and like, it's fucking crazy. It's the, it's, it's, well, it's, the it's same, 1888. It's the same argument. It's the, you yeah. make the argument both ways if you want. I mean, it's like, no, but, I mean, that just makes no sense. It's just what a the person students that, are saying is that a hearing person can't communicate with the deaf as well. It's just a person that can't hear. Right. It's fucking crazy. Yes, right. It is crazy. But so that means that there's like a, there's a eugenics part to this in right. her. That's what's happening here. So we are she's officially calling her the hero of the podcast. That's right. Right. During the discussion, she would often turn and discuss things with a hearing trustee who was beside her. Mm -hmm. On the other side was a deaf trustee and who she totally ignored the entire time. Cool. Cool. Right? Cool. Yeah, great. Says it all. Right. This person doesn't exist. Right? right? Yeah. yeah. Is it time to feed dogs caviar in front of hobos? <laughs> She agreed to meet some students the next day in her office, but the crowd wasn't having it. So she came in and said it could be in the gym and open to the entire public. After that, the crowd dispersed with no arrest. Oh, I wonder how she slept that night. She's fucking lucky she wasn't hit in the head with a rock. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, the next day before dawn. I'd be so great if she lost her hearing if that happened. <laughs> 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 uh, the next day before dawn. Students parked cars in front of five of the school's entrances and deflated the tires and then padlocked the gates. <laughs> Okie doke. At the sixth entrance, they gathered and blocked all traffic. Classes were canceled. Spillman had the police cut a hole in the fence and she crawled through it. Cool. I mean, that's how you know things are going really well when cops have to cut a hole through a fence for you to crawl through and you're in charge. Perfect. But they were literally not letting anyone on. Like King Jordan can, couldn't get on campus. Like right. they turned him away. They're like, get the I'm fuck the out of here. He's like, no, you're not king anymore. I am the Have king. Have you ever seen the movie Taps? I'm the king. Kiss the ring. No. There's no Kiss no. the ring. No, what? Kiss it. No. You're it's you're it's just that your name is King. Kiss it. Okay. Huh? No. Dance. One leg. What? Kiss the ring. No. Kiss the ring. Dude, you're the ring. a dean. Eat the ring. At a school. Eat the ring. No. Turn the chariot around. What? <laughs> turn the chariot around. You're literally in a Volkswagen Beetle. The chariot will turn around if someone can move the garbage can behind it. Okay. I don't have a Just, reverse camera. It's the uh, 80s. Please let him go. Oh, we're going to have this Y turns turning into a W. <laughs> As you were, gentlemen. Off we go. The worst. Sorry. Tires flat. <laughs> so uh media uh media went uh, got onto the school grounds of the media on uh spillman and some trustees requested a meeting with protest leaders okay so they went to meet with her and they gave her two non-negotiable demands oh great a deaf person had to be made president okay good start and spillman had to resign from the board great, great. <laughs> Great two. Top two. Great two. <laughs> She's like, how can we get this over? And they come in there. You get the fuck out. So deaf person has to be in charge, yeah. maybe. And you have to go. Okay. No. Okay. So I was talking about how we can get the, the gates open. 
Uh, you're just a student. We soldered your fence piece back in. What? You're no. trapped oh like God. a mole. A mole? Mm, there's other things that are trapped, like <laughs> ducks. Ducks? Yeah. Do you know what a trapped animal is? Yes. Okay. How? Leave, gentlemen. I want to talk to her one-on-one. <laughs> Close that door. It's time to trap the ducks and moles. <laughs> gentlemen. Today we trap the moles and the ducks. He's reading. <laughs> <laughs> the per- the person ASL translator is like, mm, pretty sure. Not. I don't know how this works. Are you saying moles and ducks? <laughs> um. So uh, obviously the meeting didn't go well when they issued their demands. Right. Uh, it ended with Spillman saying Zinzer's appointment was final and uh. quote, "If you have any questions, go ask a lawyer." so then the big uh, gym meeting happened oh she's still doing that yeah what an idiot she was trying to see if she could nip it in the bud before she had to do the gym meeting right 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 right. okay so spillman took the stage and right thank you everybody (laughs) go galadette go galadette Go You're right. All right. That's that school spirit. Feels like homecoming. <laughs> a water bottle hit my stomach. <laughs> um, so right as she got up on stage, a deaf faculty member who was in the meeting earlier stepped in front of her. Nice. And he signed what had happened in the meeting, that protest leaders had refused to meet their demands. Uh, oh, to the crowd, you mean? Yeah. Right. And then he signed, quote, should we leave? And everyone got up and started walking out. Now, Spillman didn't understand what had happened That's because a, she didn't say, know sign it's language. It's a great advantage. Because she didn't know sign language. It's a great advantage. Because she didn't know sign language. It's a great advantage. Because the chairman didn't know sign language. It's a great advantage. Because for years, she had been on the board of trustees and never learned sign language. They should put a deaf person in that place. She didn't know sign language. Right. So wait, where are y'all going? Well, yeah, I wish I had learned sign language. Huh. What an awkward. Uh, Weird. <laughs> Could you turn around and say it? Someone with gesture your mouth. Do the sign to say stop. That is fuck you. I know what that one is. That one's clear. That one's and very, that man's balls are out, and that's not even a sign. That is not. That is a it's different sign. Rude. A different sign. Uh, so she watches as hundreds of people just walk out the exits. Interesting. That's an interesting and no tactic. One's, no one's talking to her. No one's telling her why. She's just like, hmm. So an organizer, quote, that was the turning point of the whole protest. That was that moment was like an assassination. Right after that, it was utter confusion, pure chaos. Okay. A few people stayed and got on the mic. They angrily questioned and lectured Spillman and the trustees. One student asked why a deaf candidate wasn't selected. And Spillman and the trustees... Uh, Spillman said the trustees had used their own judgment and she didn't know why each voted the way they did. Finally, she ended the forum, quote, some board members have planes to catch and their schedules are already upset. This this woman (laughs) needs to, this, what do we do? What do we get? I guess poor classes. She needs to have a relatability course. I mean, she needs to understand how to relate when you're cornered. There are studies that show that when you become very rich, you essentially become a psychopath. Yeah. You just lose all touch with human beings. Yeah, does not surprise me. She's a great example. She's an incredibly rich woman. Right. She is arrogant. Anybody who is not like her is completely beneath her. Yeah. And she's a fucking monster. It's like uh, talking, being 12 years old and talking to Dianne Feinstein about climate change. That's correct. The protesters gathered at... uh, the one open gate for a march to the Capitol. Okay. Police tried to stop them from leaving, saying that they needed a parade permit. One man told the police he would translate what they were saying, but instead signed that all of the students should, quote, make a run for it. That's great. What a great advantage. I know, right? Yeah. That's I mean, they, so... I mean, this literally speaks to the issue that they're kind of talking right. about, which 100%. is that you don't understand us. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So You're not like, trying to understand yeah, us. Yeah, and so... If you, if actually everyone, if everyone did give a shit, everyone would learn sign language in yeah, school. Yes. And why wouldn't you? Sign it language make just seems like something everyone should learn. Probably. Um, 
So, uh, so the protesters sprinted through the gates before the cops knew what was even happening and to the Capitol. And I there, think they're going to get a parade permit. <laughs> and fast. All of them. So at the Capitol, a leader, some people gave speeches, and then a leader listed their now four demands. Great. Deaf president now. Uh-huh. End Spillman's reign. A deaf majority board of trustees. Right. And forget about reprisal, reprisals against the protesters. Right. Mm-hmm. And we get to eat Spillman. Yes, cooked. Cooked, obviously. We're not savages. Give mm-hmm. us cooked Spillman. The next day, classes were still canceled because they were still blocking everything. A huge rally was held on campus. Protesters burned effigies of Spillman and Zinzer. So if you're Zinzer, are you like, when should I load my stuff in? Is this, (laughs) what's the idea? Because I saw there's a little hole in the fence, but outside of that, everything's pretty shut off. She's not even there yet. How did they take it (laughs) on the phone? What did the students think? Were they excited? Hello? 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 Burning what? Hello? Hello? Uh, well, now she found out because news coverage went national. TV stations around the country interviewed deaf people, which gave the deaf community a previously unheard of visibility and raised national awareness of the issues. They Just faced. how Spillman drew it up. Right. Perfect. Before dawn Wednesday, students again blocked the gates with cars and locked them shut. Classes are canceled again. And then Zinzer got a little cocky. Oh, dear. She was supposed to start in July. What? Don't show up early. But she called Spillman and asked if she could be appointed immediately. Oh, my God. Zinzer, quote, you had a team of four administrators to run the university, and committees don't run universities effectively in a crisis. Yeah. And I am crisis Sally. Yeah, exactly. Get involved. Perfect. That morning, this will help. This will help. This is what this is what is needed for. is for her to immediately take over. Right, exactly. This is going to calm everything. They don't down. want you there in July. Come there now. now. Everything's better. That's right. Right. And by the way, this is showing the instincts of a great leader. <laughs> Just a great 100%. problem assessor, problem solver. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so Spillman agreed. Great. So they're both really good at this. Yeah, they're out of their fucking minds. Right. So now Zinzer arrived in D.C. to hold her afternoon introductory press conference. Okay. The four main student organizers met with King Jordan, who seemed unsure of what to do. Then they met with Zinzer. She asked them to set aside their demands for a few days, after which she would work with them to try to, quote, quote, find a common agenda. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what everyone wants. Yeah. A common agenda. We can work together on this. Yeah. This thing where you don't want me here. We can work on that. I can figure out a way to be deaf. (laughs) Give me a chance. I need three days. Let me just set up my stuff. But she said the students were, quote, out of control, unwilling, unable to even think about it. Yeah, well, that's weird. They have been really rude. That is weird that they're not thinking about... Her feelings. Yeah. Her feelings. I mean, she's looking for a compromise. She's about to make a lot of money. This is pretty rude. Yeah. Uh, the meeting lasted 10 minutes. Okay. One of the students quote, at first Zinzer was a very nice woman and sensitive, but she did not listen. I felt she should have talked with us more if she really wanted to hear our position. Spillman started the press conference to introduce Zinzer at 2 p.m. What a, where? At, 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 like behind in a jar in I think a glass it's, facility? Yeah, it's probably at a hotel or something. Okay. You know, it's definitely not on campus. Okay, right. A reporter asked why a school should be run by someone who couldn't speak the language of its student body. Yeah. You know, there's a university in France where they're sick of the Spanish president. It's like, <laughs> it's yeah. It's just so fucking crazy. Spillman then said Zinzer was learning sign language. Okay, okay. well, th- put your fucking money where your mouth is. Let's see. And then Spillman said she had never learned sign language because she was, quote, too involved in very boring but vital matters, such as making presentations to Congress and raising funds to have much interaction with deaf people. I was too busy to be an empath. So she's literally saying... She was busy doing boring stuff. She couldn't learn their stupid little language. That's right. Yeah. So she doesn't have time to interact she with time the deaf. She's a question for Congress. Okay? She's in front of Congress. Do you ever know how important that job is? 
And then Zinzer spoke. She talked about the enormous and exciting challenges she expected at Gallaudet. Well, I've got good news for her. <laughs> Some very exciting challenges have been thrown her way. And that she had indeed started learning sign language. Uh-huh. I already know. Fuck you. Give me more money. And I'm not listening. <laughs> and a reporter asked if she would resign if, after hearing more from students, she felt she was, quote, the problem. Zinzer said she'd only resign if the board of trustees asked her to. Well, okay. King Jordan spoke and said as a Gallaudet teen, uh, dean, he had to support the board's decision. Then he added, quote, Gallaudet will never be the same. The deaf world has changed, and it has been a very positive change. Spillman said Zinzer was already officially Gallaudet president, retroactively dating it to three days earlier. Oh, okay. Someone sarcastically asked Zinzer if she'd be leaving in a few years to go work for Bassett Furniture. That's pretty good. She was like, I don't understand. I don't know why is there. What is that? Who is it? Can Maybe if they have a lot of money. I love what? money. What kind of furniture? Money's great. Money's better than any of the problems. Jordan was asked if he thought the protest should stop. He said, quote, yes, I do. Interesting. Yeah. The King students, can just make it so. Well, the students were very upset by King Jordan's remarks. Right. He said he said that, and then he walked off the stage, and there was a student there who he was close to, and she just shook her head and couldn't look him in the eye. That's a good feeling. Yeah! <laughs> yeah a good feeling when someone's completely drained of faith from you. I'm kicking ass. Hey, how do you think that went? You don't look good. I crushed the soul of that girl. Huh? Did you see that? She fell to her knees. <laughs> Uh, so the four student leaders vowed campus protests would continue until demands were met, even if this meant giving up their spring break that was starting that weekend. Oh, you know, too, the fact that the, uh, oh. the trustees are counting on that. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah, they are. They're like, they'll go drink, they'll come yeah, back, they'll forget about yeah. it. University faculty voted 147 to 5 for a resolution calling for Zinzer's resignation. Interesting. Who are the fucking five? Yeah, those five. And 136 to 11 for a resolution advocating the other three protest demands. Great. Uh, Sounds like a majority. Although some said they felt pressure to yeah. not support Zinzer at all. Yeah, I would um, imagine. That night, a student leader, Zinzer, and actress Marley Matlin appeared on Nightline with Ted Koppel. I did Marley Matlin's kid's birthday party. So right. I finally you're in, have a dog in this you're fight. Finally in a, you're finally in a dollop. I'm finally, yeah, this is kind of meta. Yeah. This is nuts. Am I going to come up with this? You are. Does this go all the way to when I do a kid's birthday party? Yeah. That's the end. This is exciting. When Zinzer said she'd stay in office unless the trustees asked her to step down, Ted Koppel called her, quote, a puppet. You're a puppet. <laughs> And said she could resign if she wanted to. Yeah. Which is 100% well, fucking it's a, true. It's a perfect like little ironclad argument because you're like, well, if the trustees ask me to like tell me I have to go, I'll go. The trustees are the majority of them want you in there. Yeah. And they would be like, well, if she wants to leave, she can resign. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Matlin accused Zinzer of arrogance for taking over a deaf school without knowing much about deaf people. The show ended with everyone trying uh, to uh, basically yelling at each other all at once. Right. Koppel called it, quote, something approaching anarchy. Right. And CNN called it something that we will make our network. <laughs> but uh, but not so, because CNN never calls someone what they are. Like Ted Koppel called him a puppet. Fair. So Fair. Outside of that. Yeah. Early uh, Thursday morning, uh, cars had been towed to clear two entrances. So students hot-wired school buses drove them in front of the gates. It's worse, by and the way. They're bigger. And deflated the tires. Great. Right. Okay. Worse. Good work, everyone. Uh, they also put up tomb tombstones for Zinzer and Spillman. That's good. Nice. Love, nice touch. Clear. Uh, deaf and even some hearing students around the country were rallying at their own schools in support. And some were, like, driving down in busloads to help protest. Right. It's becoming a bigger movement for the deaf community. Students threatened to seize the president's campus house and office if Zinzer made her way past students blocking entrances to the school. Okay. The doors to the administration building were chained shut, so no, no administrators are on campus. At one point, uh, worried Zinzer, uh, they were worried Zinzer would sneak on campus, um, and they started checking trunks of cars going by. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
So if you're her, you're like, ah, I can't go today. <laughs> now it's like a fucking red dawn. Yeah. Um, there was even a rumor she would be flown in by helicopter that would land on the She's parachuting field. in. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard this. She's parachuting in. She's got a jet pack. She's digging her way through. She's tunneling. I mean, she's going to El Chapo her way in. If she tunneled her way in, this would be the greatest. If she tunnels her way in, I think at some point you've got to go like, all right. All right, you're president. You're president yeah, you for did. a little bit. You've shown some You've won the month. Yeah. Uh, at a rally that afternoon, King Jordan surprised everyone by speaking. Uh, he, he signed that while he had said the day before that he recognized the board's legal authority to choose a president, quote, my personal reaction to the board's decision was and is anger at the continuing lack of confidence that they have shown in deaf people. He then said he supported the four demands and, quote, the efforts to achieve them. He talked to a reporter and, and after and said he had made uh, a mistake the day before when he said the protest should stop. He saw it now as a civil rights movement. Okay. Um, he basically thought at that point he would never be president. He was giving up his career. Right. Still, it's good. It, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that night, Zinzer enjoyed a nice dinner with the trustees and administrators. <laughs> it's just always like this. Yeah, they're I mean, just you don't even need to say that they're having dinner, but you just know that they're in there. More gravy. Yeah, they're always just eating gravy and cake. Yeah, like, yeah. That's how this works. Yeah. The poor um, starve and they try to not get gout. That's right. So well, the talk at the table was of the civil rights movement they were dealing with. And this is the first time Zinzer had heard it framed that way. <laughs> she was already coming around to the idea that this was a totally unworkable situation for Good. her. Quote, that was a turning point in recognizing it as a larger social phenomenon. That's crazy. I mean, talk about it. You definitely are not supposed to be there. Yeah. But they have the fact that you're like, oh, this is a civil rights movement? What did you think it was? That's what I mean. That's why it's like you cannot be there. Right. You don't. Un you, yeah, you, she have, literally, you, are, you don't have the depth. She, she literally doesn't understand that it's, it's no different than a, a white person saying they should run a black college. Right. Like, and then refusing to leave and or then, hear that. Yeah. Or and then having like, dinner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. With gravy and cake. With gravy. I mean, we're assuming there's gravy. There's a lot, there's of, a lot gravy. of gravy. There's no, there's not, there's not gravy. They're eating gravy off of I'm each sure other. It was just gravy. Just. They probably sat in a big novelty gravy yeah. boat while they dipped like, you know, pies in the gravy that surrounded them. That's right. My understanding is they would pour gravy on Spillman and lick it off of her. Oh, yes. What's the sign for it? Thanks. <laughs> I don't know. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> pork. Mm. <laughs> pork. Um, so, quote, I looked at Jane Spillman very calmly and said, Jane, I resign. Oof. Zinzer then told them she wanted to eat a salad by herself. Oh, Zinzer, <laughs> what a fall. <laughs> She's got from the ivory tower to a booth at Wendy's alone. You want a problem solver? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had been 97 hours. Good since run. Good run. Since you had been voted into office. Do you still get office. your picture on the wall with all the other <laughs> yeah, ex-presidents? Right? You have to. What's the deal? So at this point, did they just let a little smoke billow out of the chimney they, to let right? people know they're, they're after yay. a new press? Uh, a deaf Gallaudet uh, faculty member later claimed Zinzer had a secret victory partner two weeks before the vote. Hmm. And a Gallaudet alum said a hearing trustee congratulated him on Zinzer's appointment in late February. Huh. So, I mean, those, those could just be ru rumors, but um, yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Yes. The press was told about her res resignation at 11 p.m. Students gathered at the gym and celebrated into the morning. Great. The next morning, Zinzer and Spillman held a press conference. Zinzer said she was, quote, deeply disappointed, but she now realized the best way to restore order was to resign. She finished by saying she was celebrating the deaf community's, quote, day in the sun, and then signed, I love you. Solid right. end. So she had, she yeah. had a, a momentary lack of understanding, yeah. and she came around. Great. Had a salad. Great. Learn so sign. it wasn't great that she came, but in the end, yep, good. Yep. Uh, then Spillman spoke. She called Zinzer's resignation, quote, a tragic loss for Gallaudet and an inevitable step forward for another institution. 
I'm ready for the next sentence that'll <laughs> redeem everything she's said so far. Nope. Uh, that's it. Oh. That's the quote. <laughs> Interesting. How is it truly that? I would deaf- like to say I have learned nothing, and uh, fuck you. The deafest person, yeah, is the one yeah. who can hear. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. I mean, there's being deaf, and then there's not being able to listen. How to could people. you even be at the same event as uh, what was her name? Uh, Zinzer. A Zinzer. See that yeah. revelation, and not and be, not be affected. She probably a lot. had no idea that she signed "I love you." Right. She was probably like, "Way to give it to him. Screw him. I agree, sister. What'd you just say? Kick rocks." So there's also, you know. And we see this many times in history, and certainly now, where people know that they're in the wrong, and they've taken a position, but the real problem is, is that the lesser thans are the ones who have shown them that they're in the wrong. Right, so they can't. And they cannot fucking accept that. So they'll go to their death rather than say, these people are right. She said the board of trustee, the board would meet Sunday to discuss a new selection process, and it was up to the board whether a deaf president would be chosen. Just say you're going to pick a goddamn deaf person. A reporter asked Spillman if she knew sign language. She said, although she had been on the board for eight years and the chairman for six, she had never learned the language. Quote, this job is extremely demanding and terribly time consuming. In my opinion, my efforts are best directed in other areas toward budgets, figures and programs that are not nearly as pleasurable as learning sign language. Well, she's got to devote a lot of time to wasting finding out who the next president will be. (laughs) She just had 97 hours she could have used. It so does not take that much time in your day to learn another language, particularly when you're working with those people. You also know that you really don't care if you don't even bother to go like i'm learning it yeah like you're like so like now i'm not gonna <laughs> no nah. now i'm still unchanged unfazed the protesters held their own press conference leaders said they would keep the campus closed until their three and a half remaining demands were met right they then led a march of several thousand people to the capitol this time they had a pray permit permit Protest leaders wrote the board and encouraged them to pick one of the two deaf finalists instead of starting over again with a new search. Yep. Zinzer got on a plane and went back to uh, her position as chancellor at UNC Greensboro. She was greeted at the airport by hundreds of supporters with banners and balloons. Okay. The trustees met Sunday. Afterwards, Spillman resigned of her own record despite continued support from many trustees. She said, quote, a deaf president deserves a deaf chairman. So now she's just being... She got she got fired. I mean, right. come on. She got fucking fired. Okay. There's no way after everything she's done that right. they weren't like, you got to go. Right. Because this was her uh, this fucking was her, this up right, left right. and right. The board then voted unanimously to make King Jordan president. Finally, the <clears throat> king has his throne. Kiss it. Effective immediately. Kiss it. I am now the king president. I am now the king, 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 president, 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 president. <laughs> Jordan. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. Spillman and the selection committee chair held a press conference announcing Jordan's appointment and her resignation. They said there'd be no punishment for any protest participants and announced the creation of a task force to figure out how to make the board majority deaf. The chair said he'd spoken to student leaders who agreed they would let the campus return to normal immediately. So they won. Great. The victorious protesters chugged beer and chanted, Deaf President, wow. Great. Jordan gave a press conference signing deaf people, quote, have overcome our reluctance to stand up for our rights. The world has watched the deaf community come of age. We will no longer accept limits on what we can achieve. The crowd chanted King, King, King. And then Jordan said he was going home to sleep. Okay, sure. (laughs) He's tired. Yeah. A little long long run. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. In 2006, King Jordan announced he would retire as Gallaudet president the next year. The trustees were then majority deaf as per official bylaw. They voted to replace Jordan with a deeply unpopular deaf Gallaudet provost, Jane Fernandez. Protests broke out. Uh, The NAD supported him. A tent city formed. Once again, students shut down the school. On October 13th, police arrested 133 protesters for blocking entrances to the school, 
King Jordan approved of the arrests. The Fort Duff president, now student leaders from back in the day, released a statement saying the arrest, quote, tainted the spirit of the deaf president now movement and reversed King Jordan's legacy. They decried Fernandez's, quote, arrogant, vindictive, autocratic, and retaliatory style of leadership and urged her to follow Zinzer's example. Quote, Dr. Zinzer considers her resignation the best thing she has ever done. We can only hope that someday we will be able to think we will be able to thank you for being courageous enough to take the same action. Fernandez released a statement. She refused to, to step down because, quote, we live in a country that is governed by the rule of law, not anarchy. But that's not anarchy. That's democracy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. They lose that all the time. They forget that all the time on purpose. Deaf communities throughout the U.S. and Canada formed tent cities of their own in solidarity. On October 21st, thousands of deaf people from around the world marched on the U.S. Capitol. On October 29th, the Board of Trustees terminated Fernandez's contract. Nice. This is what, uh, hey, everybody, this is what we need to do. Yeah. Jordan wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post denouncing the protesters and saying, quote, I am convinced that the board made a serious error in ascending to the demands of the protesters by terminating Fernandez's presidency before it began. The students get to have a fucking say yeah. in who's running their college, and if they don't fucking like it, every f- I, we always hated our fucking chancellors at, U, at, at UC schools. They were fucking shit, and they fucked us left and right. We should have a fucking say yeah. in who the fuck they are. The board voted to replace Jordan with a deaf Gallaudet graduate, Robert DeVia, on an interim basis. In 2009, he was succeeded, succeeded, uh, succeeded by a former... NAD President Alan Hurwitz. Hurwitz retired in 2015, and the presidency went to deaf attorney Robert Cadano. She is Roberta Cadano. She is Gallaudet's second female president. The first was Elizabeth Zinzer. Wow. The Deaf President Now movement is now known just as DPN. The power demonstrated by the Gallaudet students fueled efforts around deaf rights for years to come and also helped catalyze efforts to pass the American with Disabilities Act. So it like they awesome. it just didn't like Spillman started a, a monster like it yeah. it was one of those things sleeping that giant ju- yeah it yeah. just kept going and, yeah. and 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 you're right it is such a microcosm I mean it's just like <laughs> yeah that's it yeah that's what we live in now yeah I mean if you want to solve climate th- change that's how we have to do it yeah well and I think even the difference between eighty eight and two thousand six is noticeable too I think that is a parallel as well is that like they don't they now know that they can ignore us more than they thought Mm -hmm. and so they hyper ignore us so it is going to take massive yeah it's going to take like being okay with getting arrested and really really just being okay with like being like we're shutting the streets down down and shutting the shit down yeah Yeah. that's right hopefully it's always so the deaf people it's always so funny to people who are like if you block things, then you uh, will just upset people. Right. So yeah. the point of blocking things yeah. is to tell people that nothing's going to be the same until we actually get our way because that's justice. And what's the alternative? I mean, there is no alternative. Yeah, there's no alternative. The alternative is to just be like, Keep, oh, you're right. No, Everyone okay. be happy while we just melt. <laughs> Let's just do it that way. Uh, yeah, if, and if you don't believe that, you should go talk to a guy named Martin Luther King, who they killed. Yes, yes. They killed a lot of people. Um, yeah. So anyway. There you go. Hope you're happy. Um, we signed signs. We signed signs. There's the three ladies, by the way. Oh, wow. That's obviously Spillman, the, the ug- yes. ugly, mean, yes. uh, Nurse Ratchet-looking right. wow. demonish. Yeah. Right? Nurse Ratchet. Yep. Yep. All right, we sign uh, cups. Thank you. Baseball cups. Sure, whatever.